Well, I'm Professor Christopher Goh. I'm an ENT surgeon, an ENT and head and neck surgeon, and I'm a senior consultant at the Novena ENT Head and Neck Surgery Centre. As the name implies, it is not just a particular cancer. It is a variety of cancers that occur in this region that is around from the skull base, which is around the level of the eye, to the base of the neck, which leads on to the, to the chest. So head and neck cancers are malignant tumours in that region. A few examples would be like uh, cancers of the mouth, the throat, the back of the nose called the nasopharynx, and some of the glands like the salivary glands and the thyroid glands. Also in the throat, there is the voice box. So these are the you know, typical areas that you get head and neck cancers. Uh, the more established cause of head and neck cancers would include smoking and drinking. And if you do them together, of course the risk becomes higher. What is less well known would be things like uh, the human papilloma virus, which can cause cancers of the oropharynx, in particular the cancers of the tonsil, uh, salted fish related to cancers of the nasopharynx, the Epstein Barr virus also related to the nasopharynx, um, things like poor oral hygiene, uh, even uh, poor dentition, poor dental care can also cause cancers of the mouth. One of the most common symptoms of a head and neck cancer would be a neck lump. And if that does appear, it generally means that the tumour is in a more advanced stage, unfortunately. Other symptoms would be like, um, you know, an ulcer in the tongue that doesn't heal, bleeding from the nose, uh, voice changes, like hoarse voice, a ringing sound in the ear. The majority of hidden cancers are not so easy to detect because they are in hidden places. For example, cancer of the nasopharynx is at the back of the nose. And it's not easy to detect cancers at the back of the nose until it's late, for example, when you've got neck lump. Uh, other areas like the voice box, the larynx, is also well hidden, so it's not easy to pick up. On the other hand, there are some cancers that can be detected early enough if you are vigilant. Uh, a good example would be cancer of the tongue. If you've got an ulcer that doesn't heal for two or three weeks or longer, then obviously, you know, it could be a, a symptom of uh, head and neck cancer. Most of the time, we go by the symptoms first and if you do seek treatment, then we will have to examine and do a proper head and neck examination, meaning that it includes also a nasal endoscopy. The nasal endoscopy will uh, give us a chance to look at areas that are well hidden, like the back of the nose, the nasopharynx, the throat, the voice box. Well, head and neck cancers are treated in three main ways. Uh, you've got surgery, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy. Okay, and sometimes uh, they are combined. So basically, these are three main ways in which you treat head and neck cancers. And sometimes they are combined. In others, you can combine surgery followed by radiation, or commonly, chemo and radiation are combined and given almost concurrently. I think one of the main uh, advances that we have achieved so far is actually the use of proton beam therapy. Proton beam reduces the collateral damage uh, after or during radiation and therefore reduces the side effects. Um, other new things that have been introduced in cancers would be the kinds of chemotherapy that have been uh, and targeted therapy eh, that, is, that we can offer to patients. On the surgical front, of course, there are things like using uh, endoscopic methods to reduce scarring, use of robots you know, to, uh, to, to get access to areas that are less accessible.
non-Elizabeth Hospital has got well-trained surgeons, radiation oncologists, and medical oncologists. In addition, of course, the support team is also important. And again, non-Elizabeth Hospital uh, does provide you know, a good support team for patient care. In terms of technology, I think Mount Elizabeth Hospital is one of the first few hospitals, perhaps the first hospital in Singapore to have the proton beam uh, you know, ready for treatment. And as I mentioned earlier, I think that will give you know, the best results with the least side effects to patients. First and foremost is to avoid the usual you know, causes of head and neck cancer. If you're a smoker, please try to give it up. <laughs> and of course, uh, for those who drink, uh, you know, to reduce the amount of drinking that you get. And if you do both, obviously, you should stop smoking and drinking. Okay, and a, a good lifestyle, uh, you know, with the, enough exercise, rest, uh, balanced diet, I think that's important as well. I think my advice to people on the streets will be that, you know, do look out and be aware of what NNA cancers can present with. And if you do notice in one or more of these symptoms, do seek medical treatment early.